the last unit in chemistry covers the particle model. The particle theory of matter is a really key scientific concept that you need to know and understand well. We use it to explain the properties of solids, liquids and gases and how matter changes from one state into another. Let's check out those micro marvels again to remind us of the three different states. In a solid, the particles are closely packed and held tightly together. They're not completely still, just vibrating very gently. This explains why solids have a rigid structure and a fixed shape and are hard to compress. The particles in a liquid are also closely packed, but they move over each other. Liquids take on the shape of their container, are hard to compress, flow easily and have a fixed volume. In gases, the particles are not closely packed. They're spaced out and move around very quickly. This means gases also take the shape of their container, but they are easy to compress and flow readily. But unlike liquids, they have the volume of the container. We most commonly use the word particles to describe solids, liquids and gases. But test questions will also use the words molecules and atoms. Now, we've been using the word particles to describe both the behaviour of molecules and atoms. Though they're different, in the particle theory of matter, we can refer to them both as particles. Another tip is how you draw solids, liquids or gases. Test questions often ask you to draw the particles or molecules in different states. When you sketch diagrams, make sure you draw at least 12 particles and don't make them too small. To make sure you get all the marks when you draw a solid, make sure all the particles are touching and have a more regular shape. Remember, with a liquid, draw your diagram with most of the particles touching. If they aren't, you will lose marks. And in a gas, the particles are widely spaced and not touching. The next section will look more closely at changes in state. How the particle model is used to describe, for example, the way ice changes to a liquid and gas. When water changes from a solid into a liquid or from a liquid into a gas, we say that a change of state has taken place. When the solid ice changes into liquid water, it has changed from one state of matter into another state of matter. And remember, this is a physical change. The particles themselves haven't changed, just their arrangement or their energy. Let's look more closely. Let's take the solid fat. When it's heated, its particles gain more energy. This makes the particles move about more, which weakens the forces which hold the solid together. This makes the solid expand, and then at a certain temperature, the particles have enough energy to break free from their positions. This is called the melting point, and when a solid turns into a liquid, it's called melting. Then, carry on heating the liquid, the particles get even more energy. The energy makes the particles in a liquid move faster, which weakens and breaks the bonds holding them together as a liquid. The melted butter is turned into a bubble because it's turned into a gas where the particles are even further apart than liquid and will vibrate even more rapidly. At a certain temperature, called the boiling point, the particles have enough energy to break their bonds and the liquid turns into a gas. The liquid is now boiling. Let's magnify what's happening here and look at the particle level. You would see a liquid is made out of many tiny particles jostling for space in the container. When you heat the liquid, the particles jostle more and more. The particles get so excited and so energetic that more and more can escape the liquid. They become a gas. Once they've escaped from the liquid, the particles spread out. They take up much more space than the poor old particles still squashed in the liquid. And the opposite happens if heat is taken away. Water vapour has hit this cold milk bottle. 
As the gas hits the cold glass, it cools down and energy is taken away from the particles. They slow down and get closer together until the gas turns into a liquid. We say the water vapour has condensed back into a liquid. And if more energy is taken away from the liquid, it freezes into a solid at a temperature called the freezing point. Remember, this doesn't just happen to water. Different substances will have different freezing, melting and boiling points. So the change of state from solid into a liquid is called melting and happens at the melting point of the liquid. Liquid into a solid is called freezing and happens at the freezing point of the liquid. The change of state from a liquid into a gas is called boiling and happens at the boiling point of the liquid. And the gas changing back into a liquid is called condensing. We can also use the particle theory of matter to explain this. This balloon keeps its shape because of a gas, air. Millions of gas particles move around very quickly and in all directions, constantly hitting the inside surface of the balloon. And it's this continual bombardment which creates the pressure that gives the balloon its shape. Now you can increase the pressure inside in two ways. We can either put more air in, which means more particles hitting the sides, increasing the pressure, or the other way is to heat the balloon. This increase in temperature gives the particles more energy and therefore they move faster, colliding with the sides of the balloon more often and with a greater force. But remember, there is air outside the balloon as well. But there's air all around us, isn't there? Yes. yes. And it pushes all the time? Yeah. Yeah. So, why can't you feel it pushing you now? Smart question. You can't feel it because air always presses equally in all directions. It's called air pressure. Even though you can't feel it, ordinary air pressure is very powerful. Watch this. This may look like an ordinary bottle, but it's got holes in the bottom. But when the top is sealed, the air outside pushing up holds the water inside. As the candle burns, it uses up oxygen in the air. The egg seals the top so no more air can get in. Soon, the candle uses up all the oxygen in the air. There's more air outside the bottle than inside, so it pushes the egg into the bottle. So the compressed air inside the balloon pushes the sides out and creates pressure on the surface, but the air pressure outside also pushes on the balloon. We can explain pressure by the particle theory of matter. Pressure is caused by the particles or molecules hitting a surface. The pressure will increase if there are more particles or the temperature is increased. An increase in temperature has two effects. The particles hit the walls harder and hit the walls more often. Here's a question from a higher tier paper about gas pressure. It's got several parts, so we'll go through them one at a time. A girl, that's me, pumps up a bicycle tyre which has gone flat. As she does, she notices that the pump becomes hot. The air going into the tyre is warmed by the pumping. So in part A, the question asks, what effect will this have on the motion of the gas molecules in the air of the tyre? The clue in the question here is the word motion. The marker is looking for a description of how the gas molecules are moving. And the answer is that, with an increase in temperature, the gas molecules will speed up. They will move faster. Now, part B. When the air in the tyre becomes hotter, the pressure rises.
give one reason in terms of the motion of gas molecules in air why the pressure rises. Stop the tape and have a think. You only need to give one reason to answer this question, but there are several answers that are all correct. The pressure will rise because the molecules will hit the tyre wall more frequently. Or you could have said they hit the tyre wall harder or faster. All these answers are correct. Now part C. Next, I force more air into the tyre, so the pressure in the tyre increases. Explain why a larger number of gas molecules increases the pressure in the tyre. So I'm now putting more air molecules into the tyre. Why will this increase the pressure? More air molecules will mean that there are now more collisions with the tyre wall. The key phrase in this answer is collisions with the tyre wall. A common mistake is to say there are more collisions generally, and this wouldn't get you a mark. These last few questions may have sounded similar, but if you read them carefully, they are looking for slightly different answers. If you weren't sure of the answers, why not rewind and go over the questions again? The particle theory of matter can be used to describe another phenomenon. I can smell this food and perfume because of a process called diffusion. The particles of perfume that I have sprayed on my arm and from the food can now be smelt throughout this studio. This is because they have spread out by the action of the moving air particles. The perfume particles move away from where there is a high density of them on my arm to where there is a low density. Now this is a very slow process because the perfume particles will be hit by air particles moving in every direction. This stops them making forward progress but eventually they will completely spread out to fill this entire studio. And diffusion doesn't just happen in air particles. Okay, I'm just going to put some crystals in. The surface of the water is turning more purple. Where the crystals were high concentration and then it's suffusing out to a lower concentration. So diffusion is the random movement of particles or molecules to fill all the available space. The particles move from a higher to a lower concentration. And diffusion mainly happens in gases and liquids. This completes all the units on chemistry in this programme. Make sure that you really understand the particle model and can use it to describe how solids, liquids and gases can behave. Rewind and play this section again if you need to go over it and don't forget the book and the website. You will remember more if you revise in bite-sized chunks, so this would be a good play to break.